ever Bridges of Hope live show here on Facebook. I'm your host, Dean Tanyeha, one of the directors of Bridges of Hope. And uh, let's welcome our special guest today, none other than Assistant Program Director Edwardson Morales, uh, who will be talking to us today about addiction. Hi, Kuya Dean. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me in this first ever uh, Bridges of Hope um, Facebook Live. Hi, uh, hi, Edu. I hope you're having a good day. Um, yeah, yeah, in yeah. yeah. All, in spite of all the excitement about coronavirus, um, we're going to take this opportunity to educate our friends and our family and our general kababayans about addiction, especially in the Philippine setting. Yeah, it's my pleasure to help uh, educate the community, especially in our country. Yeah. Thank you, Edu. So yes. let's get things rolling. Um, sure. Basically, today we want people to have a better understanding of addiction. As, a, as an addiction recovery professional, how would you recognize addiction in someone you know, um, a family member, or an office mate? How would you recognize addiction? Well, um, Kuya Dean, uh, there are signs that you can see uh, in a person if uh, if he really has the disease, uh, if he is really addicted to something. It can be to a behavior like gambling or substance like methamphetamine, hydrochloride, or also known as, as shabu. Um, however, even if it's uh, if the person has uh, uh, addiction to a behavior or a substance, uh, most of the signs are somehow parehas. Eh? It's almost uh, uh, literally the same. So, um, for example, a person, uh, when he can detect if he's really having that um, addiction to something, is if there's, uh, if um, the functionality of the person is really affected. If before the person can uh, handle responsibilities well, whether a father to a family or an employee to a company, when you see that the person doesn't function as how he functioned in the past, hindi na nakapagtrabaho ng maayos, late na, the, his relationship with his workmates or with his family are affected, that's when you can see or detect if the person uh, has an addiction or uh, addiction to the behavior or a substance. Yes, uh, uh, can have a disease. Uh, yung tawag nila doon is IUD or Internet Use Disorder. Um, that means um, excessive using of uh, internet, uh, cyber gaming, uh, can lead to a person na magkaroon ng sakit din ng addiction. Even in uh, a DSM-5 or a Diagnostics and Statistical Manual for uh, Mental Disorder, uh, kasama doon yung gambling eh, na the, the chapter of substance-related and addictive disorder. Uh, gambling is is tagged, it's a gambling disorder. Um, so it's not substance. Wala ka namang tinitake na kung ano man. Uh, it's an activity. It's a behavioral addiction. So, so to answer Kuya Dean, yes, um, a person can be addicted okay. even to a behavior, not just to substances. Okay. Kuya Edu, nabasa ko lang ngayon sa dyaryo. Parang ang mga incidents ng mga sinasabi ng mga magulang na addicted sa gaming o sa mobile gaming o kaya sa gadget ay, ay tumataas na ang mga incidents niya dito sa Pilipinas. Sa karanasan mo, um, marami ba kayong nakikita ang uh, incidents of addiction to gadgets or mobile gaming? Yes, uh, it's true, Kuya Dean. Uh, in our uh, Bridges of Hope Lipa branch, um, through time that we are providing service in that area. Padami ng padami yung cases namin na ang addiction ng uh, uh, client is uh, gaming eh. No? Uh, hindi na nakapasok sa school. Uh, some of them really stop from, from going to school and then they just isolated themselves in their room sa bahay nila. And then wala na silang ibang ginagawa but just to play and play and be in the internet. So through time and maybe because of the kind of access the younger generations has now, Mas sa time ko noon, if you have an assignment, kailangan mong pumunta ng library or if you have a, an encyclopedia at home, that's where you get the answers to your assignments, homeworks. 
nowadays in one click uh, everything is there so yung access ng younger generations ngayon sa internet uh, has somehow uh, helped na ma-escalate yung ganitong problem natin ngayon na mas padami talaga ng padami yung mga kabataan ngayon na nagkakaroon ng ng dependence doon sa sa internet or sa inter uh, cyber gaming okay uh, that's true, Kuya Edo. I, I really believe the incidence of uh, addiction to cyber gaming and basically to internet or to gadget use is really on the rise. Uh, kung meron tayo mga viewers ngayon who have any questions, um, please feel free to comment or you can actually visit our website at bridgesofhope.com.ph. Um, we also have a hotline at 0917 but I encourage everyone here now to please uh, comment or post your questions here on our airing now so we can possibly answer them. Um, uh, Kuya Edu. Yes. So we know that someone can be addicted to substances and someone can be addicted to activities. But is it treatable? Is addiction manageable? Is it something like diarrhea or is it something like uh, diabetes that can be managed? Yeah. Um, addiction, like other chronic diseases, Kuya Dean, can really be treated. That's why it's important. What we do in Bridges of Hope uh, is really um, important and, and vital to our community nowadays because we know that pataas din ng pataas ang cases ng addiction sa bansa natin. So uh, the good news is it's really treatable. Uh, by definition, uh, addiction is a chronic brain relapsing disease characterized by compulsive using and or seeking uh, using drugs and of course uh, um, depending on, on a behavior like gambling despite offenses. So unlike before, years and years before, uh, it's different kasi ang moral values. You are a person that has problem with will, with your willpower. But nowadays, uh, because of the advancement of science and the studies of addiction, uh, mas naiintindihan na ng karamihan ang totoong nature ng addiction that it's a, it's a disease, it's a chronic, meaning uh, walang lunas na uri ng sakit ngunit na nagagamot, nabibigyan ng lunas. Um, it's a brain disease because among all the organs ng tao, it's really the brain that is being affected. Um, when you use substances or uh, depend on a, on addictive base. Greeting now, um, Gerald and Lito, thank you for watching, and also Grace, thank you for watching. I understand that um, based on what Kuya Edu was mentioning, uh, substance use disorder has been recognized by the World Health Organization and is a legitimate medical concern, just like internet use disorder. So these are treatable disorders and they can be managed. So, um, in the Philippines, the typical impression of people is that ang mga rehab center or treatment centers for addiction ay masikip, madumi, uh, not professionally run. Um, we believe here in Bridges of Hope that we have turned that corner. Uh, we are able to provide professional treatment services and we put a big focus on training our people and giving them the capability to give the best kind of service. In your experience, Edu, um, how was your journey? Could you, sh could you share with us uh, a minute or two how your journey went? Yeah, um, just like most of the people who got the disease of addiction, I started very young. At the age of 16, one of my uh, classmates offered me to use uh, methamphetamine hydrochloride, also known as Shabu, and then I said yes to it. And then, noong umpisa, uh, bihira lang eh, pag may party, pag may basketball game, but hindi ko na namalayan, padalas na ng padalas. So, everything that I hold 
dearly in my life, like my family, my my profession. Hindi ko na sila, hindi ko na namamatlayan na unti-unti ko nang napapabayaan. And um, so I, 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 I cannot say no to it. It became my survival. You know, yung addiction ko to shabu. And then just like any other family, they they decided to help me kasi they saw that wala na nangyayaring maganda sa buhay ko. And so they sought for help and uh, one of my siblings was able to get in touch with Kuya John. Um, and so they brought me in in Bridges of Hope Paranaque. And after that, uh, that's when I realized that I can still function pa pala. I can still be happy and successful in life even though I have to manage my disease of addiction for the rest of my life. So it's really true that it can be treated and a person with a substance use disorder or also known as addiction can still be happy and uh, live a normal and productive life. the founder of Bridges of Hope, uh, Kuya John, together with Kuya Benjo Bernabe, have been spearheading the management and professionalization of Bridges of Hope. Uh, and we're very proud to be part of Bridges, no? And um, Kuya Edu, when yes. your family called, when you, when you went on this recovery journey, um, how confident were you that you would be able to overcome it? Uh, well, in the beginning, uh, there was no hope. You know, I thought na kahit anong gawin at kahit anong experience ko ay ganun na lang mangyayari ka. I will, be, I will stay in my addiction. But I'm just really grateful that my counselors back then in Bridges of Hope Paranaque has really helped me see that there is hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel. So gradually, they have shown me how I can manage it until I was able to be reintegrated again to the normal society outside. And uh, it's just really amazing, and uh, until now, I, I stand, I stand amazed how, how I was able to do it. But of course, I also know that uh, because it's a disease, I need professional treatment. I need people to support me. So because of my treatment before, uh, I was able to really get where I am now. Of course, my life isn't perfect. It's it's really far from it. But I'm grateful that now I can. I can enjoy life like a normal person without a disease of addiction. I'm very happy to hear that, Kuya Edu. We'd like to say hello to Jamie and uh, Kuya Gerald and other people who are watching today. And uh, um, Kuya Edu, uh, you work at Bridges of Hope Lipa in Batangas. Yes. And uh, for those who are watching, we actually have branches in PF Homes in Paranaque, Mariposa Street in Quezon City, um, Angeles City, Pampanga, uh, Cebu, um, soon to open in Rizal, Binamona Rizal, and uh, soon to open also in Los Baños, in Laguna. So this is, but we are here now in BF Homes, the first and the biggest of all those bridges of hope branches. Um, I would like to also mention uh, bridges of hope has been the at the forefront of professionalizing addiction treatment in the Philippines. And um, we have helped many families and many people, and we continue to open our doors to anyone seeking help. And if you want to have any questions answered, please post them below. Please post your questions now. If there are no questions, you can call or text tomorrow or the following week. You can call our hotline 0917 509 um, So, Kuya Edu, yes, Kuya Dean. I, I know you have uh, gone through your own journey. And if you have a message to anyone who has a spouse or a loved one or a family member or an office mate who may be going through the, the pit of addiction, well, what kind of advice or counsel would you like to share with them? Um, very simple, Kuya Dean. Seek for help. Seek for help. Seek for help. Yeah. Um, because it's a disease, uh, but it can be treated even if it's a chronic disease. So um, in our country ngayon, uh, I'm glad to see that even outside Bridges of Hope, nakikita ko na a lot of people are having that vocacy of educating uh, people about addiction. And um, we don't have to wait for something worse to happen before we really make that decision to help our family members. So uh, we just have to, you know, have that um, 
uh, courage to to seek for help. Thank you. Tama ka doon, uh, Kuya Edu. I think malaking factor din yung nahihiya sila magtanong eh. Nahihiya yeah, exactly. sila mag-inquire. So, yeah. one of the things we guarantee them is actually privacy and confidentiality. We are a private addiction recovery facility and uh, we can offer them privacy and confidentiality. We can go through the program without anyone outside knowing about it because that is part of our promise. It's hard enough for someone to decide to send someone they love to a rehabilitation center to treat their addiction. We want to make it as easy as possible by easing their worries about anyone knowing. Wala pong makakaalam, no? Privacy and confidentiality is one of our priorities. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Alex Sanchez and Miss uh, Miss Jane Cantavieja for uh, tuning in to us today. Uh, thank Hi. you also. OJ Bivad and Mark Mark Delgado. Thank you so much. <laughs> and Myla Francis Camello and of course Ralph Jose. Thank you so much for tuning in. Yeah. Um, I think we've answered all of the questions that they've uh, messaged us about. Any closing remarks, uh, Kuya Edu, that you'd like to share? Well, uh, we are here. You know, bridges of hope. Uh, We're here. Just like how bridges of hope has really helped me in my journey to recovery and it's the same help that is available for everybody who needs it so uh, we are here to help we are here to help thank you thank you thank you, thank you, thank you. Morales, for, for your time for sharing with us your experience so if anybody here has any more questions we are very happy to to give you the time to answer any of your questions to give you uh, a briefing on the addiction treatment options available locally in the Philippines and of course through Bridges of Hope. So please visit our website bridgesofhope.com.ph and of course our hotline 0917-509-8826. Thank you everybody for joining the first Thank Bridges you. of Hope live broadcast. Thank you Kuya Edu. Thank you Kuya uh, Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope everyone will take care. Please don't forget Proper hand washing, yeah, yeah. And, uh, hand hygiene, <laughs> and uh, face oh, wow. hygiene to protect ourselves from not just coronavirus, but any kind of virus. So thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Person can be addicted.